Hey everyone, uh, this is Mike Kramer of Mock Capital. Today is Wednesday, October 18th. It's around 8 o'clock New York time. Uh, so today we saw markets sell off. We saw the the equity market sell off. We saw the rates move higher, bond prices sell off, and we saw the dollar uh, continuing to strengthen. And um, tomorrow, at least Thursday, October 19th, we're going to have uh, Jay Powell speaking at around noon um, he'll be doing a, a Q and A session with a moderator um, at the Economic Club of New York, um, and there'll probably be links available that you'll be able to see. That I would check with your local news or your or YouTube or perhaps the website for the the club. Um, and it, it seems, the, look, the blackout period the blackout period comes uh, on Friday, uh, and so he's obviously doing this at the last moment. This was scheduled, I think, late last week. Uh, clearly, if we know, many of the Fed governors have come out and they're certainly leaning more towards the being more patient approach, not wanting to raise rates at this meeting, it would seem from the ones that I've listened to and heard. It seems like some of that um, has been uh, moderated. I think uh, it's interesting that he's doing this at this point We've seen this before from him where he comes out right before the blackout date. Um, I can think back to November of, of last year specifically. Um, you know, he kind of moderated uh, the expectations of a rate hike. If you remember at that point, the Fed was still doing 75 intervals. And that was when, you know, they started to indicate they were going to start slowing the pace to 50. And then eventually they got to 25. Uh, and so... It seems like, you know, if if I'm pal, I guess, which obviously I'm not, but if you're pal and you're thinking about, you know, where things are and how things have tilted, the market expectation is that there is no rate hike in November. And I think that he wants the market to at least respect the idea that there could be a rate hike still to come. Um you know, certainly the back of the yield curve has done a lot of work for Powell. The economic data has certainly been very supportive of him coming out and being hawkish. But, you know, again, the issue is, is is he going to try to balance the scales and, and try to be the person who comes out tomorrow? And not, not so much that he, um, you know, wants the markets to go down, but more so that he wants to kind of get the market to not be so sure that there's not going to be a rate hike in November, that he wants the market to feel that every meeting is a live meeting. And that's really the big question here, because I don't really think there's much he could say that's really going to be new. We know that the labor market is still tight. We know that they're showing some signs of loosening. We know that wage growth is still too high. We know inflation is still too high. We know super core CPI came in, uh, has shown a couple of months of acceleration on the month over month basis. We know CPI on a year over year basis has certainly increased since June and expectations are rising for it to be closer to 3.6 to 3.7% by the end of this year. Um, we know that uh, retail sales came in much stronger than expected. So, I mean, there's certainly ample evidence to support the idea that he can come out tomorrow and try to you know, rebalance the scales or perhaps, you know, just totally go with what the other Fed governors have been saying that perhaps, you know, we may still raise rates again. But right now we think that we're seeing some moderation in the data that suggests that maybe we can wait. It seems redundant for him to come out and do that again, only because that's what everyone's been saying. And that's what the market is expecting. So again, maybe he gives us a, a point of view where he talks about where rates are going to be over the longer term. It doesn't really seem like exactly the appropriate time for that conversation, but that's sort of where we are right now. And if we look at the, the euro versus the dollar and we start with the currency market, because currencies and, and rates usually have these things pretty well understood, um, you can see the euro has been consolidating here. And what's really interesting about the euro is that it's been sort of just hovering around the 10-day exponential moving average. Uh, really, that had served as a very good resistance marker for some time. And you can see we got above it, we came back below it, now we came above it again, and we're back below it again. Uh, so certainly this could be telling us that perhaps the consolidation period in the euro is over. Um, certainly you can see there's a broadening wedge here. And I know I have the trend line drawn here because I was trying to illustrate it as acting as resistance. But if you were to move it just simply 
over this way and uh, adjust it a little bit. You could also make the, the argument that this is not only a broadening wedge, but a potential bear flag, uh, suggesting that the euro breaks below the 105 level uh, and eventually undercuts this 104 low that we had back at the beginning of October and begins to head back down to this 102 region. Certainly from a port standpoint, there's just not much long-term support in this area. And so I think once you undercut this low, I think there's a potential for you to see the euro drop back down to this 102 region. When we look at the pound, it's uh, a similar sort of look here. Again, you can see the um, trend line. If we were to just move this over to here, you could make an argument that this is uh, again, a bear flag uh, and would suggest that we undercut this low. Like the euro, the 10-day exponential moving average has been serving as a good guidepost in terms of you know where this market is going to go. So you can see it's already started to turn lower and you would just need a break below the 120 and a half level to really see that decline potentially into this uh, 118 region. And you can see why we've stopped here. This was an area of support back in the middle of March. So Again, it's not a big support region, but it's enough to have at least slowed it. We'll see what happens at that point. When we look at the yen, the yen is trying and really very close now to potentially breaking out. Um, it looks like the yen is uh, consolidating in what appears to be a, an ascending triangle. We're pretty much at the end of it here, right? So it would seem there's going to be a big break one way or the other in the yen. Um, I mean, just given where the other two currencies are, given where U.S. rates have moved on the long end of the curve, uh, given the strength of the economic data, given BOJ monetary policy, which is still living in uh, the wrong decade, um, you would begin to think that, yes, there's the possibility that the yen breaks out here to the upside and above 150. The only issue we have is we don't know if Japan will come in and intervene, which looks like they did at this point in time. And they also may have done so back uh, back at this point in time. Now, it's interesting because the other time they intervened, they got closer to this 151 region, 150 and a half, 151. So there may be a little bit of room to see, to get past that 150 region. And for all we know, Japan may have already achieved its goal, which was just to slow the move higher in uh, in the yen uh, and the yen weakening. Um and perhaps that goal is already met and their threshold is at a higher level. Now, unfortunately, this is the type of thing we're just going to have to wait and find out on. Um, when we move over to U.S. markets, it wasn't really a, a pretty day for U.S. markets. Um, we saw the uh, NASDAQ get hit by about 1.4%. We broke through support at this 14,990, and that sent us down to around 14,875 or so. Um this green line, this one green line here is a, a big level of uh, support that goes back all the way to the lows. And right now we're, we're just we've been zigzagging around it. Um, we've also moved back below the 10 day exponential moving average, uh, which could be a bearish indicator. Um, and right now we're also additionally, we also hit this resistance level. Um, if we're just in the mode of playing ping pong, uh, the next obvious sort of stop would be somewhere in this 14,300 region. And, and for that to happen, you know, we near, we obviously need to see some clear follow through tomorrow to the downside and really in an interrupted way, uh, take out the low today, uh, 14, uh, 860, which is something that we really need to see happen pretty early in the day, which would remove this. Uh, take this out of the way as well, which would really set up a, a pretty sharp decline down to this 14,600 region. Uh, when we look at the Dow Jones, uh, again, this is an index that's looked pretty troubling. Yesterday, we noted the rising flag pattern, which is a little bit different than the typical flag. This is more of a reversal pattern, and that certainly played out today, breaking this uptrend. You know, we're still at this 33,565 region. Again, Ideally, if you're bearish, if you're looking for lower prices, you want to see the index, the, the average gap below this support level tomorrow. Um, and I think that would set up a pretty sharp decline and the opportunity for that to happen. Likewise, if we don't break that level, you could be looking for some sort of rebound back to 33,790. And when we look at the S&P, the S&P uh, clearly broke down today. It hit this 4304 level, uh, bounced right off of it. This is the level that uh, really goes back here and it marks and it marks this area in here on the August 16 
2022 area. You can see if you just zoom in here, I have this marked at 4305 uh, and not this area just because when we came up, we stopped here and we held, then we moved higher. When we came down, we went below it and came back up and we stopped. And so this tells you that this is some form of support and resistance that's stronger than this. This was also a key sort of turning area. So that's the reason why I have this 4305 level marked off. And you can see we stopped right at it today. And um, that was basically, again, where we were. If you're bearish on the index, um, you want to really see the, the S&P 500 um, gap below this 4300 level tomorrow, uh, which is only 14 points. And then I think that would open up a retest of 4285 and then eventually a drop into the 4220s. Um, option expiration is this week as well. We know that there's a lot of uh, gamma up in this 4400 region. We know the call wall is up in that region. The put wall as of today was around 4300. That probably also offered some support. But as we go into OPEX on Friday, the risk here is that everyone that has these calls at higher levels may begin to sell them. That would allow you know a market maker to begin to unwind some of their hedges. Uh, the market maker will begin to unwind some of their hedges regardless because those calls that are open at higher levels are going to start really losing value very quickly. That means that they can start selling the positions they're long in as the hedge against the calls that they're short on. Uh, and that could also act as a driving force pushing things lower. And you know, again, with Powell at 12 o'clock and the VIX only at 1920, um, there's a chance that you could see implied volatility ramp up just a little bit going into him speaking uh, around noon, which means that if you get implied volatility moving up into the low 20s ahead of him talking, that implies that the morning could be uh, a, a sell where we see more selling take place in the morning. And then once we get past him, you see that event risk come out of the market, implied volatility falls, and you get one of those little afternoon pops. That would be the sort of thing I may be looking for tomorrow, uh, just given the dynamics, given how we know that the market tends to react and respond to some of these events where Powell is speaking. Obviously, there's a lot of other things going on in the world as well, but this is just, if we were to just, you know, kind of take that out and just focus on Powell, this was this would be something that I would be um, looking for tomorrow. Uh, anyway, I hope this helps and we'll see you soon. Bye.